Kansas State will be bringing Marquise Noel, Keontae Johnson, Naquan Tomlin, and Desi Sills. Kentucky will be bringing Chris Livingston and Kaysen Wallace. Okay, Kansas State is on their way, and they'll be bringing Marquise Noel, Keontae Johnson, Naquan Tomlin, and Desi Sills. I get General to start comments. it? Yeah, it's all yours. Um, first and foremost, I would just like to thank the good Lord uh, for this opportunity and the blessings that he's given us. And, um, you know, I want to thank my wife. Uh, she just puts up with so much. And, uh, and these young men across here, man, uh, we've asked a lot of them. And every time they've delivered. And uh, I'm so proud of them. So proud to represent Kansas State. I'm so proud to be a part of the community of Manhattan. And uh, I'm just blessed, man. I'm, I'm so blessed. OK, questions? Please raise your hand. Let us get the handheld mics to you and let us know who you are and who you're with. First question, second row. N Nicole Auerbach, The Athletic. Uh, Jerome, congratulations. When you took over and you had two guys on your roster, did you think this was possible? Uh, I thought that we could be an NCAA tournament team. That, that was my goal. I, Keith and I went out to lunch one day, and I, you know, I just told him, I said, Keith, I'm going to do everything in my power uh, to put a team together that will get him a chance to get to the NCAA tournament. And he told me, he said, Coach, I don't care if we have five dudes, right? We're going to the tournament because Kimball Walker won a national championship with, I think it was like three freshmen and two sophomores, whatever it was. But he knew, right? And I was like, man. With that kind of confidence, I got, we, it just made, inspired me to work harder and our staff to work harder. And so uh, he always believed it, and he helped me believe. <clears throat> Front row. He's got Christian K-State Athletics. Mark East, you're going home, man. How's this feel? Uh, man, it still feels, you know, surreal. Uh, but I got to give all the honor and the glory to God himself, man. Um, man. I mean, I could have done it without my teammates and my coaching staff. Um, they, they put together a good game plan, and we believed in it. And I'm just happy we got the victory today. Third row. 
ish. I feel like you haven't had a big shot like that since the game against Baylor, but to be able to step up in that moment at that time and knock one down at that moment, like, can you just take me through the emotions of that play? Uh, I mean, the whole time, the whole game, really, I was just uh, trying to do my part. And you, you, today I felt like it was, you know, uh, front of the post and just trying to be physical and match the physicality of obviously uh, Oscar and stuff like that. But I, I knew there would come a time, especially when how we, we weren't shooting the ball that well, I knew there would come a time when I was going to get an opportunity to, uh, to make a shot. And I, I was just got to make sure I was ready. And Keith found me and I just let it go, no hesitation. So it's just, I didn't really think much of it until after I hit it. But it's just, just grateful Keith had trust in me to, to pass that ball. For Coach Ting, first of all, guys, congratulations on the victory. With a guy like, you know, like Oscar Shibwe, dominant with the rebounds, they're getting so many second chance opportunities in a close game. How important is a number of just having eight turnovers in the game? You're still undefeated uh, when it comes to turnovers 11 or less. Yeah, uh, I mean, <laughs> they've heard it from me enough. We've sorted through it. And, you know, I mean, like we even, to start the half, we had, three quick turnovers, right? And, and I don't think we turned it over again the rest of the way. So it's huge. If we, we get shots up, uh, we're hard to beat. And as long as we don't give the other team the ball. And I mean, we defended today, right? Like, and we knew that Oscar was going to get his, and, but we had to control everybody else. Kaysan Wallace had an unbelievable game, you know, did a great job, but we felt we did a good job on the three-point shooters. And I think that was the difference in the game. Front row. Coach Tang, you always talk about big time players making big time plays and big time moments. And uh, Keontae, you know, was able to hit that three pointer at the end there. I'm curious if you could comment on that and then also on Marquise just kind of going off tonight. Dudes. <laughs> we got dudes. And that's, that's what it takes. Like, this is, I mean, people get all caught up in the coaching and all that stuff. It's dudes. You got to have players. And these dudes, they, they work, right? They've put in the time. We, we talked about it before this game, right? We, 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 we've, uh, we we're going to trust our work. And uh, we've won really good games against other really good teams in really tough environments before. So we were prepared for this. And I expected them to play great. And I, I, every time they shot it, I thought it was going in. And so... Uh, it's it's just I just they believe in themselves, but they're just they don't just do it just um, it's not fake confidence right it's the work that they put in the hours they spend in the gym and uh, all of them you know and I knew Ish was gonna make that shot because he wants to go to New York. Second row. Uh, so Marquise, you, it, it, you coach mentioned Kemba. I know you've talked about him. He's been someone who you've looked up to for a really long time. In the second half, when you are really taking over the game and scoring a lot, like what does that feel like to be in a Kemba Walker-esque moment? I mean, I was just in attack mode second half uh, because I seen how they were playing me. They were playing me for the pass uh, because I dropped a lot of dimes in the first half. So I just figured that, you know, I tried to look for my own shot um, a little bit more and be more aggressive. And I wanted to go to New York, so. <laughs> Front row. Brett Freelander, Saturday Road. This is uh, for uh, any of the players, but especially you. Um, you guys were 0 for 12 from three-point range in the first half and 5 for 9 in the second half. Other than going back to the locker room and resetting, was there anything that you guys did differently to bring about the change of, of, of accuracy there? Marquise. Uh, we, just, we just told each other. We, we stood positive in the locker room um, when things were falling. Uh, we just said that, you know, second half, we, we were going to start hitting some shots, and we did. Um, but it was, just, it was just nothing but positive vibes, you know, going into the locker room. Keontae? Um, I mean, piggyback what Keith said. I mean, we just went in the locker room just keeping the confidence. Um, we knew shots was going to fall. Eventually, Coach Reen told me to keep shooting. I'm shooting. I mean, I haven't even got started yet. So Keith challenged me during the game. Um, he got on me, um, wanted me to shoot, and I just kept driving. And then the last shot, I mean, I shot it. Confidence, so that was it. Uh, just um, <clears throat> to add to what they said, you know, even though the shots weren't falling in the first half, our defense was where, where it needed to be. And we knew if we kept defending like we were, our shots were going to fall because in the first half, we got a lot of really good looks that we were all happy with, and we all got belief in each other. So we knew it was going to fall. Third row in front of me. Uh, Coach, after the game, you and Gene Taylor embraced in a pretty large hug. To be able to do this in your first year, go to the Sweet 16 in your first year as a head coach, um, emotionally, what's it like to share it with someone who brought you here and took a chance on you after so many years of trying to become a head coach? And, um, 
No, that that was that was really cool. I actually I watched Gene and Coach Kleiman hug after a win. I was watching on TV, and they had like this hug, and you could tell like there was this love and appreciation for each other with the hug. And I was like, man, I, I'm gonna get a hug like that. <laughs> I am, I'm, I, I'm gonna get a hug like that because because I absolutely love him, and I, I can't tell you like how much I appreciate it. Like him taking a chance on me, you know, and the, yeah, the word, words can't express it, man. But I, I wanted one of those hugs, and I'm thankful that I get to live life with this man. Back right, Wallace. It's Josh Graham, WSJS. If memory serves, the last time, your last game at Wake in this building, you were beaten at the buzzer. At the end, you were kind of standing at midcourt, a bit emotional. I saw you hug Randolph Childress as well. What were you feeling as you were going through that line of fans and it ended up with Coach Chill there? I mean, it's just a flood of, of happiness and emotions because, you know, it, it took a lot for all of us to get here, uh, from being picked last to all the workouts in the summer. And, and for me to have that moment, um, uh, it just it meant a lot because, uh, you know, it, it, you never know when you have another opportunity like this. And for me to be able to play my role for this team and help this team and help us uh, get, accomplish our goals, it just was just, a, was just so much uh, emotion that I just I couldn't contain other than crying. Second row. Uh, Jerome, on, on that inbounds play in the final minute when a bunch of guys were on the line, like, can you walk us through that? <laughs> no, because then the other team will know yeah, next yeah, time yeah, we have yeah. to use it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but actually, it, it kind of came from Baylor, right? Yeah, but we, like, stole it from somebody else. And so, <laughs> yeah, but yes, yeah, we... Uh, yeah. We have our own name. We actually call it. Um, we actually call it Mahomes, for um, Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback for the Super Bowl champion, uh, Kansas City Chiefs. You know, that's probably left aisle. Uh, Mike DeCourse here from the Sporting News. This is from Marquis. Uh, I wanted to ask you when you were sort of hustling around last summer, trying to, you know, or last <laughs> spring, I guess, uh, trying to keep the team together, trying to be an agent for, you know, a, 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 agent. A, not maybe the wrong, wrong word. A, 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 a facilitator for your new yes, coach. Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask you whether you thought this was possible, just a good season. Did you have bigger dreams than this even? I mean, uh, I did have, you know, faith in that this team will be able to go to March Madness and do some special things. But I got to give a lot of credit to our athletic director, Gene Taylor, for, you know, trusting in Coach Tang, trusting in, you know, the text message I sent him. And, you know, I got to give a lot of credit to Coach Tang for establishing this coaching staff that we have um, now. Um, everybody, you know, plays a, a, a tremendous role, you know, in the locker room and, 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 the reason, and that's the reason why we winning. So, I mean, I have faith, you know, that if I, if I get at least five players, I don't care who it is that, you know, we was going to make it to March and we'll do something special. Middle of the room. David Hale with ESPN. Marquise, uh, you mentioned Kemba, and there's so many great stories of March Madness where guys who are very good become legendary. Has it dawned on you that you're like the 5'8 guy who just knocked off Kentucky and is going home to Madison Square Garden in New York and like what that story means on the bigger stage of things? Uh, it hasn't hit me just yet. Um, and I, I kind of don't want it to because I don't want to lose that hunger that I play with and that passion I play with. Um, but you know, it's, this is about my team. I mean, we accomplished this. I didn't accomplish, accomplish this by myself. Uh, everybody, you know, played huge for us. Um, the coaching staff did great. You know, I'm just proud of everybody, you know, in the locker room and behind the scenes. Second row to our right. Mitch Fortner came in radio for Marquise Noel. There was twice, there was one time you shot over Shibway. There was another time you kind of scored through him going to the glass. Uh, can you take me through those couple of plays? And because uh, from my vantage point, it was it was pretty nuts to see those plays. Um, like I said, I, I felt like I could get downhill um, versus them because of the way Shebe plays um, pick and roll defense. But uh, I don't think we mentioned how good Kentucky really was today. You know, just offensive rebounding, getting second chance points. I mean, Shebe, you know, had a double double. You know, Kaysen played good, so. You know, they, they put up a fight, you know, and it was a 40-minute battle, um, but we just ran to the fight. And, you know, we, we were the most toughest team out there. Last question, front row. Keontae, uh, you had talked yesterday about goals with this team. 
I'm just curious how, how it feels to be one step closer. Um, I mean, it's really a blessing just just being out here. Um, I got emotional uh, with my dad. Just everything I've been through is just I always lost in the second round, so I finally just got past that and made it to the Sweet 16. And just grateful for having the right guys around me. Um, Keith challenged me during the game and just it's knocking down the big three. I mean, it's just show how much we love each other and just how much freedom we have and confidence we have in each other. Okay, thanks, guys. Good luck next week. Appreciate it. Thank you. Two players, one coach here or here? Here? Okay, we're about to start with Kentucky. Uh, Coach Kaysen Wallace and Chris Livingston. Yeah, tough, tough way to end. I mean, we had some guys really fight like crazy and um, and then had a couple guys offensively not play their game the way they played all year, but that stuff happens in this tournament. And we had a, did a pretty good job on Johnson, and he makes that three. And the little kid makes the three. How he, he you know, make a deep three. We miss a couple, and all of a sudden it's, it gets out of hand. But um, these kids fought. They never stopped. I mean, these, these two, Oscar was, again, did some special stuff. Questions, raise your hand. Let's get the handheld mic to you. Any questions? Up front row. Brett Friedlander, Saturday Road Coach, and then the players can answer it as well. <clears throat> you did a really good job defensively on them on three-pointers in the first half. I believe they were over 12. They were five for nine in the second half. Was it a matter of them doing something different to get better looks, who, or was there something was, else that who played was, to it? Who was shooting? We were, we were, we did, the guys, I told them at halftime, there's the guys that we wanted to shoot the ball, shot the ball. We got to keep playing those other couple guys. The second thing is we had 11 turnovers at halftime. And I said, you did the same thing to Providence, and that's why they had breakout layups. If you held those breakout lay break layups and we finished the half a little bit better, it's a different story. We only had five turnovers in the second half. So there were things we did. But you can't go 0 for 20 or 1 for 20. You can in these games. And then we get it and say how. And, you know, you look at the shots and say, oh, my gosh, you know. But I don't, like I told them after the game, what this team had been through individually as a group, how they stayed together, they loved each other. They covered for each other. They were there for each other. And they worked their butts off for us as a staff and me as a head coach uh, and each other. So, but they, the guys that made them, you think about who made them. They did not shoot them that, they shot a couple, but not that many in the first half. Front row. 
Uh, Ryan Black, the uh, Louisville Courier Journal. Kyle, how, how tough is it for this team when you you know you counted on Antonio a lot offensively, and he doesn't score his first points until 23 seconds are left, and his first field goal until six seconds? It hurts you, but I don't want to put it on him. You know, I mean, we had other guys not show, just didn't post much either, and so it wasn't just one guy. Um, and then you're you're left to playing one way, and that's to try to throw it into Oscar or try to get one of these two to get a basket. And Chris got that offensive rebound and did, made a three in the corner. And Kaysen was, you think about it, here's a, a, a guard who's played solely point guard, which has made him a better player, but he goes nine for 11 and gets nine rebounds? What? We out-rebound him by 19. We only have five turnovers in the second half, and we lose? And we lose. And so again, when you look at that you can't, you know, you, you, in these kind of games, you got to make those shots. You got to make baskets. You got to make those free throws. And Oscar made free throws. I mean, down the stretch, we just all we were trying to do is, all right, let's get let's get this. It's the only way we're getting baskets. We have members of the media on Zoom. If you have a question, please use the um, raise your hand function. Any other questions here? Back <coughs> left. David Hale with ESPN. John, you've talked a few times this week about you know, every job is tough and they come with their own things that make them difficult. But obviously one of the things that makes your job tougher than some is, is the expectations that, that surround Kentucky. As you mentioned, the number of things that probably went your way to still lose, is there a sense of, um, or do you empathize with sort of the sense of frustration that uh, I'm sure some Kentucky fans are feeling right now about kind of where things are? I, I have empathy. You know, I, I understand what this program's about. And uh, I think, again, that's what makes it what it is. And that's why I tell players this isn't for everybody because the expectations are so high. And um, the same with coaching. It's not for everybody. This thing is there's, there's a high expectation level, and it is Kentucky. You put that on, the other team's going to play out of their minds, and they're going to play like they have nothing to lose. And that means you got to play that way. So, um, yeah, I understand it, but, um, you know, my concern of these kids, and I tried to keep what you're saying off of them. Obviously, with a couple, maybe I didn't do as good a job as I thought I did. I wanted them to just play, have fun, enjoy the experience, you know, make the plays you make, take what they give you. Questions, please, for Kaysen and Chris as well. Next question to our right. Tyler Thompson, Kentucky Sports Radio. Kaysen and Chris, I know your freshman year didn't end as you would hope, but how would you reflect on your year in Lexington? Chris? Um, like Coach said, um, this group has been through a lot. It was definitely like a journey of ups and downs. Um, we fought with each other. We learned a lot of things about each other, learned about each other as a group and as individuals. So, you know what I'm saying? I feel like it was just a lot, but I wish we could have continued our season on today. But. I feel like we had a lot of things to be proud about, you know, look, looking back on this season for sure. Kaysen? Um, I, lo I loved every moment of this year. I mean, getting to know each one of these players, uh, not even as players but as men, and growing a bond with them, uh, even with Coach and the staff. I mean, I made some lifelong friends here. Most definitely. Front row. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan Blackman with the Louisville Courier Journal. Uh, Kyle, I'm not trying to shift the focus too quickly to next season, but you know, all six of your seniors can come back. I guess what for you is hopefully the timeline when you would talk to them about what their role would be if they do decide to come back next year? Um, my guess is they, they will all leave. That's my guess, but I have not talked to them all. And, um, you know, this is, I think, when you start winding down this COVID stuff where, where that's your extra year. But... These kids accomplished a lot. We'll, we'll sit down. Um, now's not the time. I hugged them all after the game. Told them I loved them and appreciated everything they've done. Um, but th that, those conversations will be for a little later date. <clears throat> Back left. John, John Clay, Lexington Herald leader. John, do you feel like the things that hurt you in games that you lost this year, those things happened again in this game, or do you think that this was just a different game? First of all, let me give Kansas State credit. They played really rough. They played active with their hands, especially in the first hand, half. 
And they made basketball plays at the end that we did not make. So give them credit. But yes, this is what happened in certain games. And, um, you know, you turn around and you're like, guys, you can't, you don't have to make them all. You just can't miss them all. And we've had games like that. And it's, you know, you just hope in the NCAA tournament you can go on a run. And I thought after the first game where we fought, and we didn't shoot it great, but I thought that was a good sign. And talking to friends of mine, they're like, you're due for a big shooting night. You guys are due. And, you know, I was trying to, as these two know, trying to build up Antonio for two days. Just, you're going to have a great game. You're going to shoot it. And then throughout the game, we just kept telling what? Shoot it. Keep shooting. Shoot it. Shoot it. You know? And um, it just wasn't that day for him. And it wasn't his fault. I mean, we had other guys not make any shots either. And so, you know, that happens in this sport. Um, but, yes, those, again, we, you out-rebound them. You have five turns in the second half. These two play the way they do. Oscar plays the way they do. You needed one more guy to play and go get baskets and play with that swagger that you have to play with in this tournament. Any other questions? Back. Aaron Gershon, Cats, Paws, and Lexington. John, with about a minute left in the half, you pulled Oscar and a few other guys. I was wondering, did you consider calling a timeout? Yes, after I Noel? did. I did, and I should have. And I told him in halftime I should have. Uh, but we came out the second half and got up, so it didn't hurt us. But yes, that to get them back in. I didn't want Oscar to get a second foul. That's why I took him out. And then they were shooting. Yeah, I told him I should have called a timeout right then. They come down, we throw it away, and they make that shot. Um, but again, we got up, we had our chances, and that wasn't what it was. And I told him, just make it up for me. And they did. Came out in the second half, and they played well. Okay, Coach, guys, thanks. Congratulations on a great year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.